Hi and welcome to a video on arc length and areas of polar curves. So we will look at first the arc length and how to transition this from a parametric formula, which hopefully this looks familiar to you. That was where we took the derivative of x with respect to t quantity squared um, plus the derivative of y with respect to t quantity squared. We took the square root of all that, integrated with respect to t from a to b, and we had the arc length. And we converted that one from the rectangular or Cartesian mode where we saw on any curve we put in an infinite number of little tiny segments and used the distance formula to get those or the length of the hypotenuse and then the Riemann sum to add them all up. Um, so here we are at the parametric form and what I hope you'll notice is that the very next step all it does is transition that to polar because instead of x being with respect to t, x is now with respect to theta. And hopefully you remember how to find the derivative because x equals r cosine theta in polar, r being a function of theta, so r prime could be written as some f prime of theta. And so this first part right here is dx d theta and this second term here before you square it is dy d theta. Again, just using the product rule from that equation that's in green. And then once you multiply all that out, you're going to see a lot of terms that will be the same. So you're going to see that you can factor out an f prime of theta quantity squared when you do from those two terms, you'll have a cosine squared plus sine squared. And you can also factor out from two different terms f of theta squared. And so you'll have cosine squared plus sine squared in those. And of course, those are just one. And so that's why our formula ends up to be a lot neater than what we might have thought of prior. So our arc length is just the square root of r squared plus the derivative of r with respect to theta quantity squared all d theta. So let's find the exact arc length of this cardioid and this one's going to use a little bit of our trig knowledge as well. Um, so we're going to need to to remember a couple of those identities. So what we're going to do first is graph it and make sure that we know the window in which we're trying to find this arc length. So grab your calculators if you don't already have them. Okay so I have my calculator here. You want to make sure that when you hit mode you are in polar mode and also in radians for some calculations here. So when I hit y equals or r equals for polar, I'm going to type in 2 plus 2 cosine theta. And remember when you hit your x button, it changes it to a theta because this corresponds also to the mode that you are in. And I'm going to go to window, um, or actually, sorry, if you go back to your r equals, I want to make sure that the type of line that I'm drawing will trace. Um, so I choose that kind of a line. It looks like a little um, magnifying glass or something. In that way, it will draw it and trace it. So if it's going around two times, I will know. So now when I go to my window, I, 0 to 2 pi I think will be a good place to start. But the largest that my r is ever going to be is 4 because the largest cosine of theta can ever be is 1. So 2 plus 2 is 4. So I just use that to gauge, okay, I don't need to go bigger than 5s on any one side. So I'm just going to shorten my window here a little bit and go from negative 5 to 5 for x's and also negative 5 to 5 for y's. I will hit graph. Let's see what happens. Okay, and it took 0 to 2 pi to graph this cardioid one time. But if I'm finding arc length, what I'll probably notice is this is very symmetric. And this will probably make sense to you that if I graph this from 0 to pi, I am graphing exactly half of this cardioid. And so what I could do to help out my algebra a little bit later on is just double 0 to pi. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to double the arc length 
from 0 to pi. And so you want to make sure that you find your bounds, right? And you can give yourself a sketch if you want. So it looks something like so. My drawings are usually not all that great. And we're finding this arc length right there, okay? All right, so the other thing I'd like to do is if I have my equation for r in terms of theta, or r is a function of theta, I would also like to have dr d theta ready to go into my arc length formula. So dr d theta should just be negative 2 sine theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in the arc length formula. So what I'm going to say is arc length or L equals, I'm going to double the antiderivative from 0 to pi, and it's R squared or the quantity 2 plus 2 cosine theta plus the dr d theta, which we just found to be negative 2 sine theta quantity squared, all of that is under a square root, right, because it's basically um, Pythagorean theorem or distance formula. And we are integrating with respect to theta. Sometimes if I put my square root on at the beginning, I don't know how long it needs to be, so I can put it on at the end. Okay, so I will square out these terms to see what we are dealing with. So I have 4 plus, if I multiply those together, I get 4 cosine theta and then double it. So 8 cosine theta and 4 cosine squared theta plus 4 sine squared theta. Again, all under the square root with respect to theta. Oh, and that's good because I have 4 cosine squared theta plus 4 sine squared theta. So if I factor out the 4, I can see the Pythagorean identity here. So this is all 1. So 4 times 1 is 4. So I have 4 plus 4. So that'll be 8. All right, and now I need to know how to integrate this. So you do have an identity that will help you um, integrate cosine squared, for example. So when we did the antiderivative of cosine squared x dx, we used the double angle identity for cosine because we knew that cosine of 2x was 2 cosine squared x minus 1. We used that identity, but just in a backwards form, to transition this to be 1 half 1 plus cosine 2x, and then we could integrate that. So we're kind of going to do the same thing, but only we're going to go back this way, and so we're going to go from the linear form of cosine, where it's just cosine to the first, and we're going to go to the quadratic. So that double angle formula is really helpful because it can help you transition or change from either a quadratic to a linear. I'm not going to keep that one there. Or it can help you go from the linear, the first, to the quadratic, whichever you need. So because I have a square root, and u substitution is not going to work because if I did u substitution, I would need another sine theta outside of my square root. So in this case, I think I want a perfect square under my um, square root, and I think I can actually get that. So um, instead of cosine 2x, what we have is cosine theta, right? And so I'll transition this over here. So this would be 2 cosine, well that's half, this angle here is half of that one, so this will be theta over 2, and that is cosine squared. Okay, so that's what we're going to put over here in our arc length, and I'll show you why that's going to be very friendly, I believe. 
So we're doubling 0 to pi still. Square root of 8 plus 8 times cosine of theta, which I think is 2 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 1. And we're integrating with respect to theta. And so just under this square root right here, this is 8 plus 16 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 8. And so hopefully I can see 8 minus 8 adds to 0. And so I have, I haven't even integrated yet, I'm integrating from 0 to pi square root of 16 cosine squared theta over 2 with respect to theta. And that is great because now I have a perfect square underneath my square root. Single term, I'm ready, I can just take the square root of that. So my arc length will be antiderivative 0 to pi and I'm going to double it. And I can put absolute value bars, but um, I can talk about that later. Square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of cosine squared will be cosine. The only reason you want to be careful with that absolute value bars is that we're talking about the square root of a value of something squared. So we're guaranteeing a positive result or a positive output. An absolute value is the function that guarantees us a positive output. So if I don't need it, then no worries. Or if you find it helpful or as a reminder, then great. All right, so I can integrate that. I'm going to move the 4 to the front. So we have arc length is 8 antiderivative 0 to pi. Um, I'll take away the absolute value bars for right now. So I think I'll be okay here. All right, now when I antiderive this, the antiderivative of cosine is sine of the angle. But then I have to divide by the 1 half for the u substitution or undoing the chain rule. So this will become a 16 up front. And we are integrating from 0 to pi. OK, so this should be 16 times sine of pi over 2 minus sine of 0. So my arc length should be 16 times 1 or just 16. That's a really nice arc length for what seemed like a pretty messy antiderivative. And certainly, I think that you should take your calculator here and from any step you wanted to, I'll go back to my home screen, math 9 or your function integrate, you can say it's from 0 to pi. I'll double when I'm done. And you can put in any step of the way. I'll just put in this pink step before I introduced the um, trig identity, just in case something went awry there. But square root of 8 plus 8 cosine theta. You can put any step in along the way, and they should all be equivalent here. So this one should give me 8, because remember, then we needed to double it. So there's my answer. OK, and again, you can put in the beginning um, antiderivative. So I could have put in um, that red arc length up here. I could have put in this very first step if I wanted to truly check my integration, because that was before I did any of that algebraic manipulation. OK, so that was one example on arc length where it turned out to be really neat. Let's take a look at another example of arc length um, where maybe they say round. So one clue is that if a problem says round your answer to the nearest thousandth or round your answer to five decimal places, most of the times then that is just a setup and then use your function integrate on your calculator because it may or may not turn out nice underneath that square root for you. So I'm just going to rewrite r. r is 2 over theta in this example. And this one specifically does say set up an integral. 
and then use the function integrate on your calculator to find the arc length of this polar curve. And I'm only going from pi to 2 pi. So again, we can certainly find a picture. So let's go to our graphing calculators and we will input a picture just so I get a good idea what it looks like. So r equals 2 over theta. And my window, in this case, I'm only graphing it from pi to 2 pi. And so your largest that your r is going to be, because I just usually like to think of what's the biggest that this is going to be when I draw it to help me determine my window. Um, if r is the, the largest it's ever going to be, well, if theta is 2 pi, so if theta is about 6, this is going to only be about 1 third. And if theta is pi, then this is going to be about 2 thirds. So this is going to be less than 1, um, so my values are going to be small. So maybe I just want to use 2's. So maybe I'll go negative 2 to 2 for x and negative 2 to 2 for y. And again, those are just rough estimates to, you know, make your graph a better size. Um, you can certainly graph it and then determine your window. I just don't like to play around too much with my window after I graph it. So there's my arc length, so to speak, of that polar curve. Because again, I'm, I'm drawing this over a very defined interval, so only pi to 2 pi. If you wanted to see more of that sort of spiral looking curve, then you can. Okay, so r is 2 over theta. So I'll also want to find, I don't know what that was going to be, dr d theta. And so if r is 2 over theta, then dr d theta is negative 2 over theta squared. And so I will use this for my arc length formula. So I'm going from pi to 2 pi. So I'm going to do the antiderivative from pi to 2 pi of the square root of, and I'll just start my square root, r squared, so 2 over theta quantity squared, plus my dr d theta squared, all under that square root with respect to theta. And literally, this is um, a setup. Great, I have my setup there. And you can decide if you want to rewrite anything or if you don't want to just leave it as is. I can just certainly leave that as is. I'm going to go to my home screen. And I'm going to say math 9 pi to 2 pi. And I type in exactly what I see. Again, you don't have to do any algebraic manipulation unless you want to. 2 over theta quantity squared plus parentheses negative 2 over theta squared quantity squared all with respect to theta. And again, if you know that that's going to be 4 over theta to the fourth, you could certainly write that as well. Um, anything equivalent is fine. And here's my arc length one point, it says to the nearest thousandth. So tenth hundredth thousandth would be the three. So I'll look, so the seven is going to round that three to a four. So 1.424 is my arc length. Okay, and I hope you found this video on arc length helpful. Coming up next is how we find areas of polar curves. So that video will continue our section for Calc 2.